everyone, welcome to week five. Our week five focus is on challenges that social entrepreneurs face. We've read about some already, but we really haven't honed in on challenges and complications of doing social entrepreneurial work. Understanding the challenges and problems of any endeavor is key to success. If you can anticipate failure, you might be able to avoid it. If you can anticipate challenges, you might be able to work around them. If you can learn from the challenges you face, you can fail forward and be more successful professionals. I labeled this week challenges, but I think that maybe a better, more generative way to think about this week is as opportunities rather than challenges. I can't outline all the issues, complexities, and opportunities of engaging social entrepreneurship, and you've already read about and seen some of these challenges in our earlier readings and cases on Spark. So in what follows, I'm going to talk first about barriers to creativity generally, and then I'm going to talk through how one author situates challenges to social entrepreneurship specifically, and then conclude with what I see to be four key challenges to social entrepreneurial work. There are tons of readings and materials out there in the world that suggest barriers to creativity. And most of us face barriers of one type or another in our lives, our academic lives, our personal lives, and our professional lives. I've mentioned earlier in class, I think creativity is a key component of the entrepreneurial mindset and a key part of launching and sustaining social entrepreneurial initiatives. So here are some barriers to creativity. Barrier one, not having a process or approach. Last week, I talked about just two approaches to collaboration from Walt Disney and from Pixar. I think these are both also creative approaches. You can't just force yourself or others to think creatively. It's best to have a set of flexible thinking tools that you can apply in different situations to spark creative ideas. Barrier two is struggling with the fear of failure. It's hard to be creative or entrepreneurial if you're afraid of failure. If you're afraid your idea might not work or if people might not take you seriously, you'll likely stifle your own creative possibilities. If you engage the world fearing that you might fail, you'll likely keep yourself from taking risks that might have big payoffs or at worst, learning from your mistakes, which isn't that bad a thing at all. Barrier three, having a bad attitude or being around people with really bad attitudes. If you remember from last week, Walt Disney's creative approach involved having a dreamer, a realist, and a spoiler in the room. Having a bad attitude or approaching a problem with a negative orientation isn't always a bad thing. But if you approach every issue or idea as a problem, rather than an opportunity, you'll stifle your own creativity. Barrier four, not listening, not researching. You're going to research your entire life. The research isn't just something that happens in school. You're going to have to orient yourself toward listening, learning, and researching. If you own a company that provides products to a specific audience, you can't sit in a room and imagine what that audience might need. Think back to the Swiffer example earlier in class where the product development team went out and observed people cleaning in their homes. Without doing that research, the Swiffer never would have been invented. Barrier five, getting stuck on one potential way to address an issue. I'm sure you've heard the expression, if all you have is a hammer, everything looks like a nail. If you can only imagine one potential approach to a question, an issue, or a situation, you're not going to get far and you're not going to be creatively engaged. Barrier six, not seeing things from multiple points of view. And this is sort of connected to barrier five. If you only see the world through your own perspective and viewpoint, you're going to miss a lot of what's around you and limit yourself creatively. One of MSU's undergraduate learning goals is that MSU grads engage in what we call integrated reasoning. One way to think about that is we don't just want you graduating seeing the world only as a supply chain professional or as an accountant or as a philosopher. We want you to be able to see the world from multiple perspectives. Barrier seven, seeing the forest or the trees. You have to focus on both the big picture, the forest, and the small details, the individual trees, and you'll likely need tools to help you do so. A to-do list where you break down big tasks into small activities or a project management tool to help you hold on to multiple ongoing tasks are great resources. It's hard to be creative unless you have your hands around the moving parts of a project, both the big picture aspects of a project and the smaller details. 
And barrier eight, lack of creative inspiration. There are places that suck the energy out of people and kill ideas. Likewise, there are places that are too stimulating, where there's too much going on to be able to concentrate on a particular issue, question, or opportunity. It's important to recognize what tools are available to you to find inspiration. And it's also important to recognize whether your environment is limiting or distracting from your creativity capacities. I've talked about Pravin Vise earlier in class. He's a professor at the Guru Nanak Institute of Engineering and Technology, and I like drawing on him to think about the challenges that social entrepreneurs face. Vise defines social entrepreneurs as someone who identifies practical solutions to social problems by combining innovation, resourcefulness, and opportunity. Social entrepreneurs are committed to producing social value and identify new processes, services, and products in order to do so, in order to address complex social problems. Issei continues by distinguishing social entrepreneurship from capital or business entrepreneurship by saying that social entrepreneurship focuses on trying to make the world a better place to live in, focusing more on the greater good, engaging in projects that may or may not generate economic value, investing a lot of time and energy into changing society, finding gaps, creating ventures to serve underserved markets. And in this context, profit isn't the key driving motive or purpose. Social change is. Some of the challenges that Pravin Vise describes related to social entrepreneurial projects is conveying the business idea, attracting donors, working remotely, hiring, finding time, getting funding to raise money, um, finding the support of a variety of audiences, including business people, and all the audiences we talked about last week, week four, um, getting government approval for certain projects, maintaining product quality, sustaining employees, dealing with competition, promoting awareness, acquiring the needed technologies, which we talked about just a couple weeks ago, finding family and friends support. Professor Vise is just one of the many, many scholars and professionals talking about the challenges of engaging in social entrepreneurship. And I want to focus in here on four challenges that I think social entrepreneurs face. The first challenge slash opportunity is culture. There are horrible stories out there of forward-thinking entrepreneurs who enter a community with an attitude of, I'm here with my money and my ideas to change your lives. You can only make change in a community or culture from within. And it takes hard work and a lot of effort to get to know the community. Going into communities, listening, listening thoughtfully and carefully, listening for a long time, building ethos and trust, and recognizing when a community's or culture's preferences or priorities are different from your own. The second challenge slash opportunity is that of connections. The social entrepreneur has to distinguish himself or herself in a market while building relationships. This isn't to say that relationship building and networking isn't part of business entrepreneurship, it definitely is. But much more so than business entrepreneurship, connections and relationships are crucial to social entrepreneurship. You have to put time, energy, and effort into building allies and making and maintaining connections. Connections in this context are more important than competition. The third challenge slash opportunity is what I call the infrastructural context. And this encompasses institutional dynamics, economic context, technological context, and legal context. In 2008, when the US economy had tanked, a lot of both nonprofits and social entrepreneur ventures dried up and went away. Those that survived had situated themselves well and in an integrated way into larger infrastructures. They were able to navigate economic changes to best put technology to use to thrive. They were able to tap, in, tap into the legal resources around them. The fourth and last challenge is failure. Every book, every article, every biography, every web page I've read about social entrepreneurship is marked by failure. What distinguishes successful ventures from unsuccessful ones is people who can fail forward. That is people who aren't afraid to put a big idea out there and maybe to see it flop. People who can pick themselves back up and say, <laughs> okay, that didn't work. Let's try it again, but let's try it differently. People who can learn from their mistakes and can move forward. People who can see mistakes as learning opportunities more than challenges.
This week's focus, again, is on challenges and opportunities. The first piece we're going to read is called In Search of the Hybrid Ideal, in which the authors um, argue that to address deep, complex social challenges, we need broad and deep tools and methods. And they describe organizations and models that blend social commitment with profit generation, social entrepreneurship. And they focus in on a few challenges that hybrid organizations face. The next reading is by Martin Burt, and he talks about the importance of seeing problems as opportunities. Our case for this week focuses on Fashion for the Fire, which was an initiative that MSU students started a few years ago. We have two sparks for this week. The first is a piece by Tori Callahan where she lists 10 organizations using social entrepreneurship to tackle the world's toughest challenges. The second spark should really warm you up for project three. It's a short video about Spartan Imagineering and their recent project to reimagine and rebuild the Shaw Lane power plant, which is what you're gonna do for project three. So along with addressing challenges this week, we're also gonna begin work on project three. For project three, which is due by noon Eastern on Sunday, June 24th, you're gonna work with the other people in your creativity cluster to propose a new space on MSU's campus to support student social entrepreneurial work. This new space needs to be bold, creativity-centered, and innovation-oriented. It has to be by students for students. So the context is um, a donor has given MSU a $40 million grant um, and wants to make sure that students design the space, so they've launched a competition for space design. The student proposal that is the most compelling, most creative, and most robustly explained will be the design competition winner. The full assignment and specifics about what your entry um, needs to cover, and your entry will be a standalone slideshow presentation, are posted on D2L in the Assignments and Dropboxes folder. I also included one sample proposal that a student group created, and know that it's a little bit different. They pitched a space specifically to support cultural entrepreneurship. Their project got an A, B as a final grade. They would have received an A, but as you'll see in their conclusions, they really don't focus on cultural entrepreneurship. There are two deliverables for project three described in the assignment. The first is worth 500 points. This is our major class project. It's a collaboratively produced slideshow. The second deliverable is an individual reflection on your project three work. This is worth 100 points and it's just a one page document, but I want you to reflect on and tell me what you contributed to your group's work and, and what you learned in doing project three. So review the project three assignment carefully on D2L, then touch base with your creativity cluster about how you wanna move forward. And I'll be in touch um, this week and across next week with recommendations on managing this collaborative project. And as always, feel free to reach out. Let me know if you have any questions at all about our week five materials or about the Project 3 assignment.